And then I got this Johnson. It's a 135. Uh, what was it? 1970. 1973 variety. Anyway, that one, the starter's bad. So I got a starter ordered. Should be here in a few days. It's got a new solenoid on it. He said he's been running and it's great. Super clean glass tron. And uh, you've seen that on some previous videos. So if you, thanks for watching and subscribing and liking the videos and commenting. And anyway, it's beautiful here in Tennessee. We're getting ready to roll into fall. So I've been trying to do a little fishing. And I think hopefully the next video is going to be just me out on the lake fishing. Because I'm tired of working on boats. Well, at least this thing's got a handcrafted hole and it won't rot out. That's a good thing. Javelin. I don't know. Not my thing, a fishing ski. Had to get this out from underneath the house yesterday because the neighbor had a groundhog and went up underneath her. Her uh, air conditioner, they got all freaked out. I would've just left him. Anyway, then he went and got himself stuck in the fence. So I went over there and clipped a couple of things, drug him out, and they were, I don't know, they let him go on. I said, don't, don't mess with that groundhog. He's, you know, but he could tell, he'd been wrestled around all day. He was wore out, like, he was really stressed out by the time I got there. Anyway, we got him up and I watched him go down the street they're building houses everywhere and they're running all these wild animals out of their natural habitat. So I even saw a snake here last year and I didn't know what he was. I think he was like, maybe it might have been a common variety gardener snake, but his head looked like a venom head. So anyway, I didn't mess with him. I haven't seen any more of those guys. So hopefully. Hopefully, well, we got fall coming up, so they're going to go hide. Snakes are. I hate snakes. I hate spiders and snakes. Everybody does. Well, what's going on? There's that old seven and a half horsepower, 1956. I got it all back together. Uh, I had to take the lower unit, put a new impeller in it. I'm hoping the housing is good. The impeller was pretty trash. Uh, you got to pull a power head. There's seven little screws underneath, and then hopefully you don't mess up your gasket. Uh, you can't, I ordered another gasket, but I put this back together, and uh, yeah, let's hope she pumps water. I think, I think she will. What else is going on? Um, have this, uh, had to order a lower unit here. Uh, yeah, over your parts. And then um, another victim, because I'd lower you in order. Here's another victim of Percy Priest Lake. Check it out, it doesn't even have the rudder into this lower unit. So that lower unit's toast. And we got him a new one, got it installed. And I'll show that to you. I didn't film any of this, because you know, I just doing it, get it done. Okay, we got the Mercury XR6 flavor. And, whoops. And it's a 150. Decal's gone. Can't see it. You can barely see it. So, he needs a new decal. Might mention that. Uh, got a new lower unit put on for him. So, I got that. Been checking the wiring. Uh, we fixed his gauge up here. All right, there you go, guys. Sorry, my camera's freaking giving me problems because I don't know what I'm doing. And you know, YouTube doesn't want to pay me squat for making these videos. Okay, so this depth fighter, it actually works. I want to turn the power on. So. Power's all the way over here. 
film this. Anyway, I got this on. I'm guessing this is part of the whole dash because I don't hear any bilge pump and we don't have a power here. So we don't have power. Just need to check that. Or does it? I can't tell if the light's on. No, the light's not on. Sorry. So yeah, the lights are not on. But we know we got power passing through there, so we may have to check that. Make sure that's all good. Um, on this side, it's got like a manual. I'm sorry, you guys. On this side he, over here, there's like this sensitivity knob, and that's going to be for the auto live well. And then, you know, navigation lights I haven't checked yet. Uh, courtesy lights, I don't see any. I'd probably put some in, but I've got that off. Accessory lights on. And it's kind of the same thing up front. There's a whole panel up there. Let's see what happens when we... So you can see. Let me turn it back. So here's the little horn. This is not working. There's our fuel gauge. I had to fix that. The ground was making it to the here, but I guess it wasn't making it back there, so I made another ground cable to go from the sending unit, the, the little round piece, to the negative side of the battery. And then over here, we got voltage. And we'll have to check our tack. And then, of course, this is... Uh, water pressure yeah we can watch our meter and see if anything drops when you turn on i don't see anything so obviously nothing's pulling electricity so i think this needs both pumps i'm gonna have to let him know about that so we can see what he wants to do the trim switch works But we don't know, there's no courtesy lights. And we don't have navigation lights. And then the aerator is... All right, you guys. I really don't get paid hardly anything from YouTube to make these videos. I don't want to sound like I'm crying, but it ain't, ain't making a lot of money here. Got this 115. And uh, it's a funny story because... Whenever he dropped it off, he told me how long it sat at another shop that I know. I had sat for a while, and they, they did a carb job on it. I don't know if he needed a carb job or not. He spent a lot of money on it, uh, and it sat there for a while. Anyway, he needed somebody to look at it. Not a lot of guys in this area to do this stuff. So I got it, which is fine. Um... It would be nice to get it done and get it out of here, but, you know, we'll take our time, get it right. It's a good job. He's paying me pretty decent, you know, so I'm going to take care of him. But uh, it's a weird one. So I think the carbs are fine. And, and I wonder if it even had a, if it was a problem with the carbs in the beginning, but we won't know that. No way to know that. And, uh, Anyway, so what's happening with it? So this guy is really intermittent. You know, it's a V4 Johnson 115. I want to say it's a 2000. I can't remember. It was a 2000. It's the one with the optical ignition with, you know, yeah, they're not fun. I guess if you still have a tool somewhere, it would help you out a lot, a diagnostic tool. Uh, you know, but we have some weird anomaly. Like we have, like it, you could try to start it, try to start it, and it will not start, it'll just turn over. And then you come out here and one turn of the key and it fires right off like that. So, what happens? I mean, well, I don't know. Thought it had a short. Um, pretty sure it has some kind of short. So I replaced the ignition key because 
the kill switch, it's one of the keys where the kill switch is on the key, like a little lanyard part. So I bought a new one because they're cheap and I got that installed and I've taken a continuity checker, checker and I've traced the lines all the way back to here and all the lines are good. Okay, the next thing I found was, hopefully you can see this, I don't know if the camera is gonna really pick this up very clear. Try to zoom in maybe. With that pin over there on the left, see how it's kind of turned to the side. And the next one is a little off, but then the, these first two, they're fine. So I got a de-pinning tool that I just bought. I'm gonna have them, you know, anyway. And that'll just come out of these seal connectors in here. Maybe I can fix it. I'm hoping I can fix that, because I think this is our problem. When I look at this, this is the black and yellow wire, um, which is kind of like a kill switch. So I, I'm really weird, weirded out because if it's not, like I can put a, a little, I don't know, a thing in here in uh, probe, and then I can go up to the kill switch and you can hear it turn off, turn it on. Because I can go to the meter side to ground and then the other thing I found was this wire had been rubbed through, so I soldered it back together and shrunk wrap it. So I have a new rectifier coming because I, I think we have a problem with our rectifier. So this this doesn't seem to be our problem, but I think it is, you know the rectifier maybe is a problem. I hate the fact that they put the solenoid down there because now you can't remote start it. What I'm talking about is the starting solenoid is way down here. You know, I wish they would have like mounted it over here or somewhere, but not down there because then, you know, you can't remote start it. So I have to disconnect the battery to do this, which, you know, no problem, no big deal. All right, I got that one going on. And like I said, it's a really weird deal. So we got some sort of strange problem in the ignition system and I think what's happening is uh, the the symptoms were when he brought it to me was that at tw what did he say like 2500 rpms a little higher like 3200 rpms it would just bog down and then it wouldn't run okay this is the 1956 Evinrude seven and a half horsepower and uh, so we got it running and um, it's got an old gas tank. It's got the dual line, two lines. One is for air and the other one is for your fuel line. And uh, it's got a little primer bulb down there and you push on it, you just pump it up and then there's a little glass bowl underneath here. And, you know, I, uh, I'm, you know, I'm inclined to maybe take this glass bowl off. It looks like there might be a little bit of debris in there. Uh, probably should have just done that when I took the lower unit off because I had to lift the power head up and off. That's how you do these. See, they went to a little help. Had, you know, like 60s and 70s, they had a little plate on the side, and you take that plate off, and then you could reach in there, and there was like a 3 ace bolt kind of went through and locked locked that dude in place but they don't have that on these it's kind of a pain and i guess i could if i need to i guess i can take the power head back off there's a gasket underneath there there's a couple of gaskets anyway trying to make a little money this is that radio it's like the box it's gonna mount in so I just kept me a little piece of board because under the dash I'm going to put a couple of screws here like on each side is really. Anyway, he bought this little digital digital media receiver with Bluetooth. I'm not big on these radios, to, but hey, he wants it. Let him have it. We well, got some directions. Looks like it's got, oh, this was his. <laughs> His sending unit that was no good. So 
So here's the dual. And it's got all our little directions installation. Some power and grounds and some speakers, I, I would assume. So I guess that's August 2022 update. If anybody cares. What in the world? So until next time, we'll see you guys later.